<clears throat> All right, folks, welcome back. Uh, this is Andy Q, uh, the bike farmer. Uh, I'm going to try something a little different today. Um, this is a bike that I think qualifies for what I affectionately call uh, pump and polish. Um, this bike is really clean. It's in good shape. It's hardly ridden, if at all. Um, these sorts of things come along. Um, periodically, you know, they're bought with good intentions that they're going to get ridden, um, bring them home, hang them on a hook in the garage, and there they sit. They never get ridden, and they sit, and they hang, and they hang, and they hang, and they hang for five, six years, and then um, they get put into a garage sale or traded in um, to buy a kid a bike or a grandkid or something like that. Um, so they are out there. Um, I see that this one was, uh, made by, um, Shields, um, made by, sold by, by Shields, um, which is a, a major, not a major, I guess a, a fairly large box store, sporting goods store, um, in Iowa and Western Wisconsin. Um, you know, big box stores, I don't think have really great bicycle service departments. Um, you know, REI can be okay. Um, but for the most part, they're sporting goods stores, not bicycle shops. Um, so the assembly on this bike is suspect. Um, I see that the stem is put down all the way and forward. Um, you know, that's not something that I think most bike shops would do. Um, so I'm guessing that there isn't a whole lot of, or any lube on these, uh, cables. I don't think the wheels have been touched up. Um, you know, grease in the seat post, grease in the stem, you know, that sort of thing that, uh, we do at bike shops or are supposed to do. Um, so that's what I'm going to go through. I'm gonna go through and do all of that stuff on this bike. I'm going to do it all in one take. That's what's different about today. I'm going to try to do this with zero editing. I don't think it's going to take much more than 20 minutes. Um, I can do these things pretty quickly. So, um, just so I don't run out of, uh, memory or battery or any of that kind of fun stuff that likes to happen. Uh, I'm going to get started. Um, here we go. Um, I may zoom you in. Um, so my head's going to be out of the frame. Um, so you won't get to hear my, or watch my lips flapping while I talk, but, uh, here we go. I'll zoom you in so you can see the important stuff. You see the whole bike? I think you can. Let's make a little adjustment here. I'll uh, kind of center things just a tad. Um, all right. So we grease the seat post quick. Pull it out. Okay, we'll grease the seat tube, not the seat post. If you grease the seat post, then all the grease just gets smushed up. Um, but if you do that, everything's good. Leave just enough showing for uh, the clamp. We'll get her clamped up in the stand. All right. Oh, there's a little moonlight. Let's introduce a kitty. She always finds the valve caps. This is Lady Moonlight Duver Lane. We call her Moon Dazzle. She's really little and young. She was born in September. It is currently February. All right. Um, first step is to disconnect the rear brake, which is extraordinarily tight, which makes me think that maybe something's out of place, but it isn't. So I'm going to loosen it because I can't even release it. Loosen the brake a little bit. Can you still see the bike? Okay. Get that wheel out of there. Get the front wheel off. I'm going to take this, um, what you call it, pump bracket off, but I'm going to leave the Bontrager bottle cage on this bike. 
um, just because it's nice and shiny. And uh, I generally offer a free bottle cage when somebody buys a bike from me. Get them pretty cheap and they feel like they're getting something for free. And I don't want anybody dehydrating because that's a good way to ruin a perfectly good bike ride. But these uh, pump brackets don't make a whole lot of sense if you don't have the pump. Um, I do end up with a pile of pumps. When I pull accessories off of bikes, I put them in a bin and sell them for cheap. Let people pick through them. So sometimes they're nice, but not everybody needs to carry a pump. You know, it's funny, a lot of people end up buying pumps um, as accessories, but they don't even know how to fix a flat on the, on the road, so it's totally pointless. Um, but it gives them a sense of security. All right. And I think I've got this set up so you can sort of see the truing stand here. I'm um, doing two things here while well, I'm checking. It's missing one of the springs, which as long as you have one, it's still functional. Um, I don't have a surplus of skewer springs laying around, although I suppose I could make one. Um, but we're just touching this wheel up. Like I said, I'm guessing it has never been touched up. I don't think any spokes have ever been stretched out. You know, I find out which side uh, needs adjustment and I'm either loosening or tightening spokes depending on which side. I can feel this hub um, is adjusted really well. Um, you know, a properly adjusted hub is gonna have a tiny bit of play when it's off the bike. And then the quick release skewer compresses the whole thing um, and sets the preload that way. Um, this one's got a little bit of wiggle, so I'm thinking just because there's a, a spring missing, well, a professional wouldn't lose a spring. The wheel's been off the bike at some point. Makes me think maybe it had a hub adjustment. I'm gonna check um, just to make sure that the lock nuts haven't loosened up on it. Because they come tight from the factory, but you can kind of grab them. And if you grab a couple of 17 millimeters, you don't want to like crank on them, but just check to see if they back off with a little bit of pressure and they don't. Yeah, and I just uh, tightened it just a, a smidge just to make sure that things are tight enough. So the hub is checked and the rim is straight now i was able to just take out the little bits now for some cleaning um this bike isn't really dirty so i'm going straight with the polish this is a carduba wax giant liquid silk um furniture polish from the grocery store works great too um, Lemony Fresh Pledge is really good, but kind of expensive. The generic stuff I have found works really well. Um, if you can find Behold, um, I had really good luck with some Behold that I bought. Um, I found uh, my local grocer, their um, generic store brand, which I can't remember. You know, it was like Surefine or something, but I can't remember exactly which one. That stuff was excellent. Um, the bottles wouldn't last very long. They were small and really discharged the stuff quickly, but man, did it work well. So I'd go in there and like load my cart up. I'd buy a dozen at a time. And then I just talked to the grocer and I was like, hey, can I get cases of it? And I bought a case and you know, it goes quickly. And uh, then I, just kept forgot, forgetting to ask. It was kind of a hassle to get the case. Um, you know, there's lots of moving parts and people involved and some confusion on how to pay for it and 
all that. The, the communication was kind of lacking, but it was nice to be able to get a case of it. So if you do a lot of it, I mean, the cheapest bike polish out there is to go get a case of generic furniture polish from your grocer. That was that. That's what that rant was all about. I'm just double checking to make sure that the rim is still satisfactory. Okay, now we're gonna grab a relatively clean rag and clean up the rear triangle, derailleur, maybe the front half of the front triangle. Yeah, I mean, this bike uh, was in a very clean, dry garage. There is no filth on this. We are just knocking off some dust. Putting on some wax here. Um, you know, I offer a, a quickie tune-up. Is what we call it. Um, you know, a discounted tune-up where we still have the customer leave the bike. Um, and it gets put in the queue with the rest of them because, um, you know, sometimes it, we do come across something. Um, we want to take a thorough look. You know, I'm taking a thorough look at everything while I'm doing this. I don't suspect I'll find anything, but, um, you know, it's a, serv a discounted service when somebody just has a bike and they want peace of mind that it's good to go. You know, the bikes hang up and the tires lose air and that freaks people out you know because car tires hold air for a longer time they're un they're not under as much pressure car tires you know about 30 pounds right and bike tires are i mean these are 75 so air likes to escape when it's under pressure who doesn't you know what i'm saying okay this is a good time to lube cables um Well, the way I do that is I push the derailleur in, take the back loop out, release that cable, and then just take my little bottle of TriFlow and give it a thin layer all the way around, take the excess and rub it on with my fingers in the non-housing areas. Exposed areas. This also spreads the lube, you know, when you do this. Just use the housing to spread the lube all across the cable. Just a nice couple drops all across it. Slickered and snot on a doorknob. That is a free flowing cable system now. Um, we'll do the rear brake cable. Systematically, I work from the rear of the bike to the front. Um, I kind of do everything the same-ish every time. Um, you know, the same basic process. That way, I, um, things are consistent and I don't forget as much. So yeah, this uh, front brake cable, rear brake cable, sorry, was uh, um, pretty corroded, pretty dry. Not corroded, dry. And, uh, showing signs of corrosion, but nothing a little lube won't take care of. Doesn't require steel wool. There wasn't rust. Woo! That's slick. I'm going to lubricate my brake pivots. You know, these are very clean. There's probably some of that really cheap factory grease in there. And a little bit of tri-flow is going to um, improve the viscosity of that, and it's just going to coat inside there. Get your wheel in there. I tighten the skewers down so the lever, I still have to demonstrate that at some point, but the lever starts pushing back when it's sticking straight out. Man, better than new. That absolutely feels better than the day it was bought. Guarantee it. Now we can tighten this cable back up. 
Now that the system's lubricated, you really know what's happening. And the springs are actually doing, they're not fighting any kind of um, gunk or buildup or dryness in the housing. Um, so you can get a proper adjustment on the spring tension, which I'm doing right now, which was only off by a smidge. I like it. These tech drill brakes um, are excellent. You know, for being an entry level 7000, Trek 7000 is the bottom of the line um, Trek hybrid from the year. Um, no suspension fork. Does have a suspension seat post, but it's spec'd really well. It's got an Acera rear derailleur. Um, these are decent wheels. Um, the Tektro brakes. Um, you know, they the, it, as the years progress forward, these lower end bikes become cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. And uh, this is a really good era of Trek, by the way. Really like it. Probably early or mid two thousands. I'm guessing mid two thousands. Really like it. Doing the front wheel here quick. Give her a spin. This one's straighter than the rear was, which is what you typically find, but this bike was not ridden. If this bike has 100 miles on it, I'd be surprised. I know some used bike shops will, you know, adjust the prices of their used bikes, you know, based on like the componentry level and that sort of thing. And I don't do that. I just really don't care about componentry level on these used bikes. Um, to me, it's all about condition um, and purpose. You know, this, this bike I'm going to get more money for and feel good about getting more money for it just because it is in such good shape, so clean. Um, we want to clean this wheel. Speaking of clean, don't need a ton of juice. It's just so good. These are my favorite bikes to work on. They're the easiest. I can tune these up in my sleep. Trek really had their act together in the 2000s. You know, they had Lance winning Tour de France's Tour de Lance. There's my uh, controversial statement of the video that's hopefully going to lead to millions of comments. But Yes, Lance Armstrong is kind of an asshole, but man, he was one hell of a cyclist too. I do believe that he won and he should get credit for winning. That's my take. I have a picture of him in my bathroom over there from an old Trek manual. We cut it out of the manual and uh, I think we've got, we like drew a little mustache on him. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's not like I idolize the guy or anything. I'm just saying. That's quite a feat. How many? Seven Tour de France's. And then I don't know how many after coming back from that cancer. I mean, pretty incredible life. You can't deny it. And, uh, you know, it's really a shame. I think uh, any kind of um, substance abuse, addiction story, um, anytime anybody gets involved with uh, a team where there's so much money and corruption and a sport that's so corrupt, you know, all of that. Um, yeah, I mean, ultimately the buck stops with him, right? But... I mean, he was stuck in a system, too. He wasn't making all those decisions. Um, he could have handled it better, but I think the story is bigger than just not liking him. 
But then I watched that documentary, the ESPN documentary, I'm greasing the stem, the steer tube and the stem here. Just thinking about the next guy. Um, I watched that documentary on him and just like, man, he's just such a competitor and was like, you know, win at any cost, you know, even making sure that everybody else loses. And uh, I just, I mean, that's so against the grain for my personal philosophy. I think, you know, if you're going to win, win. So I don't condone any of what he did. But it wasn't too far off from what everybody else was doing either. So, and what was expected of him. I mean, it was totally what was expected of him. And we got to, we got to take some credit for that too. You know, we wanted him to win. There's a lot of pressure. My Lance Armstrong rant. All right. Yeah, I'd be pretty mad if like my kids were racing against him and weren't doping and didn't have a chance because he was. Yes, I understand. This, I'm just putting this stem up a click to show people that there's some adjustment and it doesn't seem to want to move. Gonna try to, oh, it's moving. Gonna put a wrench on it. Maybe it's just where it wants to be, right there. Man, struggling. I had to take this bolt all the way out. It's got like a little wedgy, clampy dealy here. And usually you just have to loosen it, but there we go. So, you know, this is kind of angled up. I think it's still got one more click to go up and a couple clicks to go down. Um, but that way, you know, this is wh where most people are going to want it from my experience. Um, so it's probably just going to be good to go. But if anybody's like, oh, I want to be leaned a little more forward or can we be more upright? You can say, sure, let me adjust that quick <laughs> and then get to struggle with what I just struggled with again in the field. All right. I'm eyeballing this handlebar adjustment right now, which is probably going to be a redundant task because that's something I check while it's on the ground, which actually is going to happen pretty quickly. Still need to do the front derailleur cable and the front brake cable. Front wheels cleaned and lubed. Front hub felt good. All right, so the front brake cable um, can be a little trickier. You know, you usually don't have a whole lot to play with and you just gotta depend on gravity here, unless you wanna loosen everything up. You know, but with a quickie tune-up, I like to take the easy way where I can. You just put some lube in there and then work it down. And if it still doesn't feel excellent, then I'll loosen the cable from the anchor bolt and go after it that way, you know. But nine out of ten times that's good enough and it feels great. So. Got some squeaking up here. Generally speaking, it's right there or right there or maybe inside a little bit. Yeah, I think I took care of it there. 
again, those front reflectors, they just grab the cables and make things difficult. Gonna adjust the tension on this brake. It feels like some tension can be added. So I'm just gonna add some to the side because it was weak on that side. Also this, uh, this front noodle has a spring in it. Um, if the front brake really feels squishy um, and it's just not acceptable, you can take that spring out. It's basically kinda, it's there to prevent people from locking up the front brake and flying over the handlebars. Um, but you know, that's not really how it works either. If people panic stop, they're panic stopping. It doesn't prevent you from panic stopping. So these brake pads are a mess too. I'm going to realign them. This one's barely hitting and I think it's going to make the spring adjustment easier if I have it working properly. I better check the rear ones too. I guess maybe the wheel could be in crooked, right? I have been kind of in a hurry here. Just double check my work. No, I had it, I had it right. Ooh, that was a good adjustment. Just kind of wiggling, make sure everything's moving freely. Just because the spring tension's really tight on one side and really loose on the other. There we go. Stick with it, guys. Stick with it. You'll get there. I'm gonna use the barrel adjuster to add a little bit of tension to this front brake cable. I don't like to do that too much, but uh, I make exceptions periodically. Rear brake pads look properly aligned. Uh, this rear one could use a tweaking. Or left one. I guess they're both rear ones. Don't forget about that front derailleur cable. Still got to do that. Um, okay, so I just adjusted the rear brake pads, which um, made the brakes feel tight. So I'm gonna relieve a little cable here. And I'm guessing I'm gonna have to make a little adjustment with the barrel adjuster up at the lever. Yeah, so, so now the, the right one, the right barrel adjuster matches the left barrel adjuster, the front matches the rear, and that's uh, totally acceptable. That's another thing, like let's say, you know, this isn't a very small bike, but maybe the rider has really small hands and you want to turn in the reach adjusters and you need that extra cable. Um, it's nice to be able to use the barrel adjusters to uh, make the brakes looser, not just tighter. Um, you know, part of a on the fly setup, tightening down that front um, reflector. The rear reflector has a really nice mount on the seat post here. I like that a lot. Speaking of the seat post, every single bike always tighten the seat post bolt, seat clamp bolt. You don't want that coming loose. Here we go. We're going to lube the front derailleur cable. What I did there is I shifted up into the big ring and then without pedaling I uh, shifted down into the little one and that 
gave me a whole bunch of slack in the cable, enough to get the cable out of its stops on the frame, giving me enough room for to lube the cable. Now the housing is sliding on Teflon. You know, the housing's lined too with the plastic, so it's like plastic in a Teflon bath. Whew. Just running through the gears. Um, let's, uh, if, you, if you grab your derailleur and hold it, and then grab the cable somewhere else and pull, you can sometimes stretch the cable. Keep that bike from coming back to you. Still good. Um, the front one is uh, friction shift. It's not indexed. So all you gotta really do is check your limits, which have been set. Most of the time the factory limit sets are uh, pretty good that I've found on new bike assembly for the last couple decades. Um, I'm gonna just double check our headset. I'm gonna crank the lock nut down. It's tight. Then I'm gonna crank back the adjustable nut off a little bit so we can tighten those on top of each other. Double check the bottom bracket, which uh, is gonna be great. We're gonna find our eight millimeter crank on these crank bolts, which that got a good eighth turn. This one is tight. Pedal wrench. Make sure your pedals are tight. Grab that 14 millimeter and check the kickstand. Whoop, did that backwards. All right, brain fart. So there's that, we'll hang that up. Get that out of the way too. Oh. And 14 millimeter is in its home. Nobody likes a loose kickstand. Lube the chain, pulleys, pivots. Pivots. I'm gonna go through with my tri-flow and put a drop of tri-flow in every bolt head I can see. Every bolt head that grabs my attention. And this just keeps rust at bay. Um, you know, in case this bike is left outside all winter long like the last one we did. You know, that'll uh, dry, evaporate off. I don't know what actually happens, how that, what the mechanism is there, but it leaves behind a thin layer of Teflon then that just kind of coats the whole inside and so moisture doesn't get a chance to oxidize. There's your chemistry lesson. Oh, it's terrible at chemistry, it's so hard for me. It is kind of neat though, once you really get into chemistry, oh, it's really just physics. All right, so we call it a pump and polish. So we are going to pump. Tires feel re relatively firm. This is nine o'clock in the morning and my 
compressor isn't set to go off until 10 o'clock in the morning because that's when the shop opens and I just replaced this hose yesterday and it felt like we had a ton of pressure I guess I could check the gauge you know actually go look at it but it's I don't know 10 feet away from me I don't have time for that it's all the way on the other side of the room I think that bike is done folks you know I mean give it a test ride put a tag on it sell it oh not quite done yet we gotta check our cockpit I like to do that standing over the bike as if I'm the rider yeah let's make a couple tweaks here I don't like this handlebar position that's better I like uh, I like the angle of my levers they're down a bit I can bring those up a smidge I got I got time I think and even if my I know my SD cards about to fill up and uh, even if it cuts us off right here you guys saw 98% of what I do in these instances yeah if you get lucky enough to find one of these for 100 bucks at a garage sale anything under 100 bucks man that's an easy flip and being so close to track um, around here you know it's 11 miles away Trek headquarters there's so many people in this area that are associated with Trek and know a neighbor or a family member or somebody that works there they get bikes like this so cheap on their employee discount program um, which post COVID doesn't isn't as big of a deal anymore like they just don't have bikes available for that um, but anyway there's tons of these out there like everybody's got a Trek bike like people that wouldn't normally spend the money on a Trek bike have a Trek bike that's what they call them too Trek bikes um, I'm gonna zoom you back out there you have it um, you know a mid 2000s Trek 7000 pump and polish hybrid in my opinion these are possibly the most sensible bicycles ever made and now we are introducing Sir Gregor Samsa the orange look at the camera look at this guy he's a munchkin what huh Here, should we dance dance for the camera those are the shop cats um anyway yeah these I think are the most sensible bikes ever produced terrific value any used value um yeah I mean if I had if I needed to commute I'd really consider something like this um you know because parts are cheap they hold up well they work great um you know I don't mind that this has a mega range freewheel on it like who cares that thing breaks it's 15 bucks you know um yeah these frames are excellent alpha aluminum TIG welded um never had a problem with them ever just a really really great value and, and you know really great bike um, and they sell like hotcakes so thank you again I hope you enjoyed the video um, you know if you want to see more videos like this um, you know to subscribe which uh, you know I'm gonna be putting them out as quickly as I can um, I really enjoy it it's fun um, you know if you if you saw me do anything at all on this that you think I couldn't do better please leave a comment um, make it as nasty as you want to be let's fight about it um, I may defend myself you know these are my methods I'm not saying they're the best methods they're not the certainly not the only methods um, but it works um, I've been doing this a long time I sell these bikes and uh, not a lot come back to me and when they do 
it's usually just a tweak or two and they're out the door you know so i don't have to worry too much about it um until next time i'm andy q bike farmer thank you so much for watching